Thank you very much uh, uh, to Cry for inviting me also this year uh, to give a talk, and it's a real pleasure to be here. So in the next 10 minutes or so, we are going to discuss about um, uh, cardiac MRI in the AIVC. I would like to thank also Michael because uh, he anticipated some of the issues that we are going to discuss uh, uh, soon. So I would like to start with a, with a big question that is a relevant one. And the big question is what is arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy? Because we will see in the next 10 minutes or so that uh, uh, this is not so straightforward. Uh, so I will steal a definition from Professor Corrado, a uh, paper on New England Journal of Medicine published two years ago. So ARVC is defined as a heritable heart disease mm -hmm. that predominantly affects the right ventricle. <clears throat> and the hallmark of the disease um, is a progressive loss uh, of right ventricular myocardium and replacement by fibrofatty tissue. How do we make the diagnosis of ARVC? Uh, clearly, cardiac MRI is just a piece of the puzzle here, and we have several investigations that we can use, uh, and we have to use. Uh, so we have the ECG, the echocardiogram, signal average ECG, of course, uh, family history, personal history, arrhythmias at 24-hour tape, uh, genetic test, and then we have the cardiac MRI. Uh, how do we say that uh, what we see is normal or abnormal, possibly suggestive of AIVC? Well, we have to use the uh, revised as false criteria that were published almost 10 years ago now. Uh, and uh, as far as cardiac MRI is concerned, uh, the task force criteria identify major and minor criteria. And both major and minor criteria identify a combination of two aspects. So the regional wall motion abnormality, so as uh, reminded by uh, Michael, uh, akinesia or dyskinesia of the right ventricle, plus um, right ventricular um, dilatation and or right ventricular systolic dysfunction. And the threshold are a little bit higher in terms of volume for the major criteria and uh, a little bit lower in terms of uh, systolic uh, function and right ventricular ejection fraction. So these are the numbers, but how were these numbers derived? Of course, uh, if we want to believe in something, we have to understand uh, what were these data based from. Um, and uh, these are the data. So these are in the supplementary material of the uh, task force criteria. So these data derived from a comparison of apparently healthy individuals, 462 individuals from the MESA study in the United States, and 44 patients with ARVC from a multicentric experience. So we see already a limitation here. So the number of apparently healthy individuals is more than 10 times the patients with ARVC. And of course, ARVC, we know that it's considered to be a rare disease. But also another limitation is that the age of the apparently healthy individuals uh, was uh, 60, while the average age of a patient with AIVC was 40. And this is a classical case at a classical CMR of a case uh, uh, of AIVC, and we see that uh, uh, there is a, a right ventricular regional wall motion abnormalities in the base of the um, of the right ventricle, there is uh, some right ventricular dysfunction, but the uh, right ventricular dilatation is not uh, particularly significant, it's not particularly marked. It will probably not fulfill task force criteria. And this is particularly relevant to underscore something that is changing in the nomenclature of this disease. So clearly we are used uh, to a definition of uh, a condition where the fibrofatty replacement is affecting predominantly the right ventricle. But we are increasingly realizing that uh, this is a biventricular disease. So both right and left ventricle are affected. And uh, how did we rea realize that? Well, mainly uh, because of the increasing, increasing use of uh, cardiac MRI and of genetic tests. Why? This is uh, one of the first uh, description of left dominant arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy using cardiac MRI. Of course, cardiac MRI has a huge advantage with respect to echocardiography. Uh, 
because uh, even if the left ventricular ejection fraction may be normal at echocardiography, of course, uh, uh, echocardiograms cannot see possible myocardial fibrosis, myocardial scarring in the heart, something that cardiac MRI can do. And of course, if we have an association of right ventricular abnormalities and uh, late gallium enhancement at cardiac MRI, we put together these things and uh, we define a condition. And of course, also the use of genetic tests. Um, if we consider patients that uh, express a phenotype of dilated cardiomyopathy or non-dilated hypokinetic cardiomyopathy, and we uh, do genetic tests, we realize that uh, some patients show some desmosomal uh, gene variants, pathogenic variants, that are classically associated with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Not only desmosomal mutation, also other mutations, like for example, lamin AC or filamin C mutation, which uh, have an arrhythmogenic phenotype. And also pathology studies. This is an experience from uh, uh, Professor Shepard and Chris Miles. Um, in sudden death victims, that were found to have ARVC at uh, the post-mortem examination. And we see that this is a biventricular disease in 70% of the cases. So clearly we are abandoning the traditional model of the triangle of dysplasia of ARVC to adopt a more contemporary model where the left ventricle is uh, uh, involved in most of the cases. I want to share briefly with you uh, our experience at uh, St. George's Hospital, where we were able to, um, uh, to, to, to find 43 patients uh, uh, with a rheumogenic uh, right ventricular cardiomyopathy fulfilling the uh, task force criteria for the disease, uh, all investigated with cardiac MRI. And we see that uh, out of these uh, 43 patients, uh, most of them had an abnormal cardiac MRI, 86%, but there were also patients that did not have an abnormal cardiac MRI. And most importantly, 20, so 46%, did not fulfill the cardiac MRI task force criteria, so the one that I described before, so the dilatation and dysfunction in combination with dyskinesia or akinesia. Also something that is quite relevant is that uh, uh, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy appear indeed uh, as a biventricular disease. Howard. So we had biventricular involvement Howard. or left dominant disease in more than 50% of patients that had an abnormal cardiac MRI. But the most important concept is the 46% of patients with definite diagnosis of ARVC using the task force criteria did not fulfill the cardiac MRI task force criteria. And uh, of these patients that did not fulfill the task force criteria for cardiac MRI, we see that there are other abnormalities that can help us in the diagnosis. So particularly, isolated right ventricular regional wall motion abnormalities, left ventricular involvement, um, uh, positive genetic tests, or ECG or alter criteria were present in these patients. So what are, what are the most common cardiac MRI abnormalities in this disease? Of course, all of that. So, well, thinning, uh, outflow tract enlargement, uh, systolic dysfunction, dilatation. But what we have to remember is that in the equation, probably subepicardial LG is particularly relevant in this condition. And this has been shown to you by Michael previously. So, um, of course, we are concerned about our Howard. athletes that show Hello. right ventricular dilatation, which is often isolated. This is very I true for young you can athletes. Me. Can you? However, in this uh, recent experience, we tried to match our uh, ARVC population with uh, a similar age uh, uh, athlete's population. And we see something that is quite interesting. So that if we consider young athletes, yes, the right ventricular dilatation at cardiac MRI may occur. But if we consider veteran athletes, despite having run for three decades, uh, very rarely we observe a significant right ventricular dilatation that would, feel fa uh, would fulfill task force criteria. So to conclude, uh, as uh, David Blunke uh, suggested in this interesting editorial, in ARVC, imaging diagnosis is still in the eye of the beholder. And uh, to conclude, the quantification of the uh, right ventricle by the cardiac MRI has substantial observer variability in the determination of the volume of the right ventricle. 
And uh, most importantly, modified CMR criteria still require a subjective feature. So a regional motion abnormality must be present in, in addition to quantitative metrics. The diagnosis of ARVC is not made by cardiac MRI, but it's definitely a multiparametric uh, uh, diagnosis where cardiac MRI may play a role. ARVC is known to prefer preferentially affect the right ventricle, but we're understanding that uh, this disease is uh, a biventricular disease where the left ventricle is often affected. Thank you very much for your attention.